sequel to the highest grossing film of all time, the bona fide success people love to hate on, and it finally comes with a sequel 13 years later. Was it worth the wait, and could it ever live up to the hype? Despite my reservations going in, yes. Yes, it can. Truly, James Cameron does not miss. Zero spoilers ahead. If somehow you live under a rock, this sequel has been a long time coming. Mainly because the director has planned, and already shot one of, many sequels, and had to develop increasingly advanced and complex technology in order to achieve his vision. He did it for the original, and he's done groundbreaking work here yet again, immediately. It's obvious that it looks leaps and bounds better than the original, which holds up incredibly well visually, but the technology here is just above and beyond. For example, the skin on a CGI character is usually too smooth looking. I noticed that issue more so on the original this go round, but here it looks clean, perfectly textured, like it'd be a person you could reach out and touch with blue skin. I was blown away. And as the film progresses with all the nature scenery, water, creatures, and more, I was picking out what looked great and what was practical and then I forgot. And what I mean by that is I stopped noticing any of it. It was organic, so well done, that it became a seamless part of the immersion. That's difficult to do with visual effects, motion capture and computer generated imagery, especially characters. Going even further, midway through the film, it hit me that not only did I stop noticing, I could no longer tell what was real and what was CG based. Absolutely insane, and I'm not sure that's ever happened before. It has pushed the envelope forward yet again, especially in the underwater sequences. I have a love of water and swimming, so I connected deeply with the extended sequences swimming around Pandora, exploring the world. I felt like I was on a theme park ride with the characters. I didn't go see this in the higher frame rate or in 3D because I don't care to, but it was every bit as astounding visually in 2D at the standard frames per second. Now, while I could gush all day about the visuals, let's talk story. The first Avatar gets a lot of flack for essentially being Dances with Wolves, The Last Samurai, or even Fern Gully, but in space. The white guy who's supposed to betray the natives, he infiltrates, ends up joining their cause. It may not have been original, and it was almost entirely predictable, but what I care about more here as a new IP is how it's executed. And it was done well. The Way of Water also doesn't have the most involved plot, instead choosing to focus on the natural fallout from the events of the first, which leads to a very personal story about family. Some of the decisions to get to the crux of this story happened a little bit fast, but I also found it refreshing because big budget temple epics nowadays can either be an overplotted mess or an underplotted action fest. Here, the more simplistic story allows the Way of Water to double down on one of the best aspects of the original, the world building. But we also get to know many of the characters while exploring a huge part of the world barely mentioned before with the oceans. The eased back plot creates room for character growth and development in ways I did not expect. I watched the teaser trailers and other than one spoiler from a supposed spoiler free review, thanks for nothing IGN, I knew very little going in. It's amazing how much they accomplished in progressing Pandora and each side forward. The human villains as a faction lack a lot of nuance, but who leads them does not. There's an important detail I missed at the beginning because I was too busy eating M&Ms, but you'll catch on in the heavy exposition. This particular character I'm talking about by the name of Spider is the one area of the film I feel like the story didn't quite know what to do with as much, but there's a massive moment in the final act with him I expected more conflict from, but it's a big glossed over. I will also say there is some very obvious setup for Avatar 3, which is supposed to come out in 2024. Lots of ideas and plot are introduced and not resolved at all, especially with one other character in particular. While I'm glad we're getting more, part of me wonders if it had been better to softly hint at it more instead of half diving in and then ignoring it the rest of the film. Maybe they should have saved it all. It's not necessarily detrimental and it has me excited as I was invested and intrigued by the subplot. There's just no immediate payoff in the massive runtime. Three hours and 10 minutes may seem like a turn off. Don't be like me and buy a large drink. I usually don't, but I didn't want to die of thirst. I had to hold my bladder for like 90 minutes. There's no credit scene though, just awesome music continuing the great, if not necessarily hummable score. Or maybe I can't hum it, but let's not risk YouTube content ID wrath. The action set pieces are a step up from the first. We still get the large scale battles, but we also get more up close and personal conflicts that play out in spectacular fashion. One on one fights, stealth sections, it's really cool. But the spectacle here is balanced as always with a James Cameron film, delivering in tension, action, and emotion. This is a jam-packed movie. 
with some details and names getting lost in the mountain of exposition and events, and I admit occasionally you will feel the length, but I was never bored. I just had to pee. <laughs> Lastly, thematically, it hit much harder than I anticipated. As a father, the themes of family, parenthood, and what it's like to be a middle child who feels different, as well as that responsibility of fatherhood, it cuts deep, especially in the third act. I am not ashamed to admit I shed some tears and felt the weight of something I never used to be able to relate to, only sympathize with. It hits hard and it hits good. Movies are a magical thing. They can be used to inform, transform, and even comment on the human condition. There's the large objective technical and writing qualities that go into crafting a well-told story through visuals. But there's also the subjective portion on whether it lands for anyone or everyone. Typically, I lean into that subjective nature while acknowledging the vast importance of the former. But The Way of Water is special in that it delivers on all those fronts, being an entertaining spectacle, a moving piece about the bond of family, and a technical marvel in an overcrowded big budget landscape. This is an astounding sequel containing an epic IP and I originally wasn't even all that excited. But go see for yourself. Avatar 3 cannot get here soon enough for me. And God, 2022 has been quite a year for movies. I give Avatar The Way of Water 5 out of 5 stars. Thank you so much for watching. Comment below what you think of the franchise. Hit subscribe. Ring the bell for more content coming soon. And remember, Always look for the good.